Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. So today we're talking about the shift in narrative that Rainbow Six Siege is seeing this year, where they're moving away from them doing a sport in a stadium, in a kind of simulation, to military and counter-terrorism operations. And this is all tying into the rift between Rainbow Six and Nighthaven and the apparent split. So Harry, who is the director of Rainbow Six, he's called Six because he's the leader, he has been splitting up the Agile squads into Rainbow Six and Nighthaven squads so that they can go off and be effective military units to do probably counter-terrorism or other kind of things. Now, we did get a little bit of information out of the Year 7 reveal. It's very cryptic, it's very vague, as I have come to expect after covering this game for seven years and of course seeing seven different roadmaps and visions for those different years. So I'm going to be looking at this in two different ways. One will be with really high expectations, kind of my dream outcome, and the other one will be a far more realistic expectation. So first of all, let's hear what the game director, the brand new game director for Siege, actually said in the live stream reveal about this. The last couple of years, we focused on the simulation and on the end of year tournament. This year, you see a huge divide between Nighthaven and the Rainbow Six Siege squad. And because of that, Harry's now breaking up Rainbow Six into smaller squads. You'll see team captains leading in a specialized force, and they'll start moving across the globe, doing what they've been trained to do, to put their lives on the line. And that brings a lot more focus on their military background, and you'll see an arc of storytelling throughout the year. With this change, you'll see operators interacting with each other more often, and you'll see each squad take on a unique identity that you can follow along and also root for them as they go out into the world. Okay, so first things first, let's get everyone up to speed because a lot of people might not know what the hell Nighthaven even is. And I think the best way to explain it is that they're basically Rainbow Six, but for profit. They are effectively a private military. Now, they have exactly the same structure as you will see from Rainbow Six. So Rainbow Six has their R&D developer who is Mira, but Nighthaven has Osa. And each has a leader, so of course, Kali is the leader of Nighthaven, with Harry being the leader of Rainbow Six. And that, of course, gives Nighthaven a far more evil kind of presence, where we don't really know if they're evil or not, but they might well do more shady stuff that might well be considered evil. But they might be doing it for the right reasons, whereas Rainbow Six is very much just about doing the right thing, and they're usually funded in the books and the lore from uh, the expanded, you know, Tom Clancy universe by actual governments and stuff like that. So you can kind of think of Nighthaven as being a mirror image of Rainbow. And it is also kind of confusing because, of course, Nighthaven actually joined Rainbow Six. And, of course, Harry's actually splitting off the squads. It doesn't seem to be Callie doing it. So, you know, it's definitely not exactly the best lore that they've built out and because of that it's definitely a little bit confusing there's also a lot of stuff that's been done in like comics and cartoons and of course the cgis we've seen and it's all being a bit disjointed so it's hard to kind of follow along but if you want to get the vibe of nighthaven simply watch this little video here where you definitely get sinister undertones you've heard my price if it's too high then we've nothing left to discuss <laughs> you think I run a charity? I have investors, unlike you. And they expect a return. Call me when you're serious. Payment received. I'll bring my best man. Who am I? Prep for phase two. But anyway, now that we're actually up to speed, we can talk about things. So what is going on here? What is the director of this game talking about? And I think we can break it down in two different ways. So first of all, the title card that we actually see for this little segment in the live stream, which said narrative restructure. Now, of course, this new director has just taken over in the last few months. And we've seen that the brand new CGI with the sisters fighting 
is insane and actually shows counterterrorism. it shows military operations and gives us a much more grounded look at our operators in action in a far more what you would assume Rainbow Six would do rather than the sports side of thing and it's much more what I would expect from the Rainbow Six franchise when I was a teenager playing the first few games so this is obviously a big shift but that CGI would have taken months to put together like literally months before the new director was actually in the position. So this swing in direction is probably not the newest thing behind the scenes. They've probably been working on it for quite some time. But it is obvious they are taking a very big shift in narrative here and moving away from the sports side of thing that has obviously been the focus into potentially counterterrorism. Now, the director says military specifically. He doesn't say counterterrorism. Now I think that's because it's a live stream. It's you know being broadcast on Twitch and stuff. They probably want to stay away from the terrorism word and I don't expect them to go there even in the future. But I think obviously when he says military stuff, we're looking at those kind of scenarios. And we certainly see that in the sisters CGI where Ella is actually saving a hostage. That is awesome to see. That is like, you know, that's proper Rainbow Six stuff. So that's brilliant. And then the other telling thing is at the very end of this segment where we get this, which says Rainbow Squad 1, 2, 3, and 4, and of course ending with Nighthaven there. Now, what I get from this, and of course anyone could interpret this any different way, but what I see is four squads for four seasons in a year, which means we'd probably get a story for each squad per season. So season one, we hear from squad one, then we hear from squad two in season two and so on. That's what I get from that. But of course it can be interpreted very differently because it's very, very vague, which is unfortunate about these uh, live stream reveals for New Year's because they're always vague in the details and some of it you just have to kind of guess. And of course you can be very, very wrong. Like I've done a video on the Six News channel about the Bravo packs, which are coming, but I interpret it as being a season one thing but of course, it could be season three for all I know because they don't actually give a date. So interpretation here is going to be pretty vital and that's why we're going to be looking at this with great expectations and also terrible expectations. So the great expectations would be playable content that is cooperative and is military actual incursions. So going off as a squad of four and actually engaging in combat against terrorists or Rescuing hostages, defusing bombs, everything, of course, Rainbow Six is known for. And, of course, we'd be also following along with the Nighthaven squads as well. Now, taking the expectations down a bit, we could see CGI versions of that. So we get nice little mini movies that are really cool and we get to enjoy them throughout the season. That would be sweet. But the lower expectations would be comics, cartoons or just bios or stuff like that. You know, the new season launches and we get a little text bit about what's going on. That could be it. it, really could be. And of course, none of this is on the roadmap as well. And that could either mean that they don't really have much content to give us over the year for this, and it'll just be something very small. But they did bring in the creative director for the game and had him talk about it. And he seems passionate about it. And I assume bringing him in to actually talk about it means that it's bigger than probably comics or something like that. But there's no way to be sure at this moment in time. But what I can definitely say is to me, Rainbow Six Extraction is great. I love playing it. I've been super, super enjoying it. And it's because it has the Rainbow Six gunplay. And I love that gunplay. And I've always wanted it in a cooperative game. So what I'd love to see, of course, in Siege is cooperative missions. And they don't even have to be that big. Like if we could get a 10, 15 minute mission every season that is like a five man squad going in and you could maybe do a few different tactical ways of doing it and different plans of attack and stuff. That would be insane and using like the actual siege gadgets and stuff and just playing out a scenario would be incredible. Now, obviously, can they do it? And we've heard time and time again about how this is a live game, how it is so built up at this point that going in and adding new stuff is difficult. It also takes a lot of time. We see features that should be simple taking ages to come in, like an FOV slider on console. It's going to take you know, multiple seasons before that shows up in game, even though it's now coming in this year. When you would think that which should be super simple, it's already a PC feature, hopefully you can just switch it on. But obviously it's not as easy as that. But anyway, if we take this down to the bare bones, 
The sister CGI that they put out for the Six Invitational, showing Zofia and Ella, showed a, a big switch in the narrative of Siege, showing us proper counterterrorism stuff, showing us proper military stuff, and really giving me an injection of stuff that I had, you know, missed so much from the Rainbow Six universe. And if I continue to get any of that in the future in any way, it's a bonus for me. So I'm hoping for the best that we get some sort of cooperative mission. But even if we just get comics that play out and show our operators in action in those military scenarios, I'll still be happy with that. But let me know what you think. Let me know what your interpretation of what the creative director is saying here, what you think that means for this year and what you think these different squads mean for the rest of this year and how it's going to play out and will it be satisfying or will it not be? Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you next time.